Former NFL Network reporter Jim Trotter dropped a blockbuster lawsuit today against the NFL, suing them and its media on the NFL Network, alleging racial discrimination and retaliation after his contract was not renewed earlier this year. Trotter, who's an African-American, was employed by the league for five years and spoke publicly and privately multiple times about the lack of diversity at the NFL Network. And twice, he raised the issue to NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell uh, at the annual news conference at the Super Bowl. This was this year. Hey, Roger. Uh, Jim Trotter, NFL Media. Um, you and other league officials have said that the league's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion extend beyond the sidelines and beyond the front offices and is applied to all aspects of the company. I've worked in NFL media for five years. During those five years, we have never had a black person in senior management in our newsroom. That's a problem because we cover a league who, according to league data, the player population is 60 to 70 percent black, which means that there is no one who looks like these players at the table when decisions are being made about how they are covered. More concerning is that for a year plus now, we have never had a full-time black employee on the news desk, which again is a problem because we cover a league whose player population is 60 to 70 percent black, according to league data. I asked you about these things last year, and what you told me is that the league had fallen short and you were going to review all of your policies and practices to try and improve this. And yet a year later, nothing has changed. You know, James Baldwin once said that I can't believe what you say because I see what you do. And so I would ask you as an employee, when are we in the newsroom going to have a black person in senior management? And when will we have a full-time black employee on the news desk? Well, Jim, um, I am not in charge um, of the news. So again, two straight years, two straight years, uh, Jim Trotter, uh, raise that particular issue. Uh, and uh, in his lawsuit, uh, he was uh, very clear in terms of uh, the fundamental problems facing the NFL network, the lack of African Americans in key positions. Uh, but he also uh, dropped this in the lawsuit. Go to my iPad. He said, as, such, as one such, he said that uh, Mr. Trotter's experience with discrimination and retaliation was not limited to, limited, limited to his termination. Throughout his employment, Mr. Trotter witnessed and observed discriminatory and or hostile conduct by his employers, including by NFL team owners, that went entirely unchecked as a matter of standard operating procedure. As one such example, Terry Pagula, owner of the Buffalo Bills, stated in reference to player protests against racial injustice that, quote, if the black players don't like it here, they should go back to Africa and see how bad it is. Mr. Trotter raised complaints and concerns about this remark, but no remedial action was taken. As another example, Jerry Jones, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, responded to a question posed by Mr. Trotter regarding the dearth of black professionals in decision-making positions for NFL teams by stating, quote, if blacks feel some kind of way, they should buy their own team and hire who they want to hire. Mr. Trotter raised complaints and concerns about this remark, but no remedial action was taken. Karan Phillips is a reporter for Deadspin. He joins us right now. Uh, Karan, glad to have you here. Karan, you've uh, been, you've covered the NFL for years for a number of uh, major publications. Uh, so uh, these sort of things are not new to you. Jim Trotter uh, could have easily just Remain silent, could have taken uh, a package they could have given him when he walked away. Uh, he chose not to because he wanted the freedom to be able to speak freely. And now we have this lawsuit. Uh, we do. And uh, I knew this lawsuit was coming. I just didn't know it was coming today or I've been a little bit more prepared. Uh, but what this lawsuit is, and I'm happy that you went through it and showed your audience the two quotes from the owners. And I know those two quotes are the headline grabbing things from this entire situation. But I would encourage everyone, um, fans of the NFL, um, people who are just casual fans to tune in every now and then, and especially the people who have been in denial. And when I say denial, I mean willful denial about what this league is and how they operate to get your hands on the entire 53 pages. I've read it. You need to read it. Read it. Um, the quotes are what get your attention. But the details are in the lawsuit because that lawsuit is the playbook 
for how the NFL gets down when anybody black who they feel steps out of line or says too much in public. It is right there in all 53 pages. NFL, of course, um, released their statement. Go to my iPad. They say, quote, we share Jim Trotter's passion for quality journalism created in and supported by a diverse and inclusive environment. We take his concerns seriously, but strongly dispute his specific allegations, particularly those made against his dedicated colleagues at NFL media. Mr. Trotter's departure from NFL media was one of many difficult decisions, similar to decisions recently made by many other media organizations to address a challenging economy and a changing media environment. Jim was one of many employees who were unfortunately affected by these business decisions. We appreciate Jim's five years of service at NFL Media and wish him much success in his new role. The NFL has made significant strides in improving diversity and inclusion. And while we acknowledge there's always more work to be done, we are committed to continuing that progress. Well, you can always expect that vanilla, that vanilla response, um, Karan. But here's the other deal here. Uh, and the bottom line is... Uh, he lays out two very clear comments made uh, by these owners. And if I'm a Buffalo Bills player, I damn sure want to go to Terry Pagula and say, what the hell was that all about? Uh, you do. Um, and the Buffalo Bills player I would go to is DeMar Hamlin. Because um, he is the person I would have the questions for. Um, like, like you said, uh, those quotes really um, are jarring to most people. I think they're jarring more to white people, if we're being honest here. Because if you're black in America, somebody you know has said to you or you've heard of you experienced yourself, some white person telling you to go back to Africa if you don't like something. Um, so when I read the quote went through the lawsuit, that wasn't the thing that necessarily jumped out to me because that was part for the course if you're black in America. It is uh, the breakdown of how these things continue to go on. Like that response there from the NFL um, is what we expected. But that response is a complete lie because if you're going to say that Jim Trotter is no longer there and that's what, and you didn't renew his contract because of financial reasons, then why do you have, to be honest, a whole bunch of sorry people at that network still have jobs when Jim Trotter, I'm old enough to remember when, what, last month in Birmingham, he was NABJ Journalist of the Year, um, and he, had, he flew into Birmingham just coming from an award he picked up from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So you're telling me you have money to pay other employees, but not him? It just doesn't make sense. And also, like I said before, get your hands on the document, on the lawsuit. You will see how um, the NFL showed us how they went about getting rid of him, if you believe the allegations and the claims. Because this wasn't just some overnight decision. There's a step-by-step -step breakdown about how all this came into play with the diagram that you will see in my column today on Deadspin and in the lawsuit as well that has a, a picture breakdown of all the employees at NFL and media, um, from the owners to the ones in power in the newsroom Jim Trotter was, was talking about. And you will see by the photos in that document, all of them are white. Uh, you spoke of uh, NABJ. This is a photo of me and Jim at NABJ after he was uh, given the Journalist of the Year Award. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'll say this here. Um, you know, I, I've been critical of NABJ. I'm a three-time board member. I'm a lifetime uh, member. Uh, I'm in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and frankly, uh, our last board of, board of directors uh, was egregious in not giving the NFL Network uh, the, the Thumbs Down Award. I said, you know, you, you, you give Jim the Journalist of the Year Award, but why, how aren't you on checking the NFL Network? We should have given them the Thumbs Down Award for what they did. Uh, to Jim and the failure to address this. Now, Jerry Jones has come out with his comment in response to this lawsuit. Quote, diversity and inclusion are extremely important to me personally and to the NFL. Come on, guys, my iPad. The representation made by Jim Trotter of a conversation that occurred over three years ago with myself and our VP of player personnel, Will McClay, is simply not accurate. Karan, here's the deal here. The attorneys that he has are the exact same attorneys who filed the lawsuit. Uh, they're, they're standing with Brian Flores in his lawsuit against the NFL. And in their statement, they said that, that Jim, because he's not a player, is not subject, subject to arbitration or media, excuse me, to mediation. So this thing can play out publicly. If Jim chooses not to settle this lawsuit, the NFL is going to have to go through significant depositions. And, and, and to add to that, the Brian Flores case is heading to open court. 
Um, the league has been trying to get that in arbitration. And for a second time, uh, it was a month or two ago, a judge had to come out over the case and say, no, this is not going behind closed doors. No, we're not going to let you hide. Um, you're, this is either going to open court or you're going to have to settle. So now you add in Jim Trotter's situation, Brian Flores' situation, and please don't forget, America, that the NFL is being investigated by the attorneys generals in the state of California and New York together um, for allegations of racial discrimination racial discrimination, sexual harassment, and ageism. Um, so, <laughs> for all the things the NFL are, for exciting as Monday Night Football was last night, and we understand that this is America's number one sport, if there was ever going to be a point in the history in which this league was going to finally be held accountable, we are reaching that moment between these three cases. Uh, and we talk about being held accountable. Look, when Colin Kaepernick sued the NFL, uh, he and his attorneys settled for $8 million, okay? You know, and again, a person makes a decision as to what they want to do. But the reality is, um, again, Brian Flores, uh, who's who's an assistant for the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, and Jim Trotter, they could they could choose to say, no, we're going to take this thing all the way, and that's going to expose everything. They can hide behind paying somebody off. When you talked about uh, in your story uh, the, top, the breakdown of what the NFL looks like, go to my iPad, this is it right here. You see their owners, only one a person of color, that's uh, uh, Khan, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you'll see right here, Roger Goodell, NFL commissioner, Brian uh, Rolap, CEO of NFL Network, Hans Schroeder, COO, David Jarenka, Matt Quinzel, Todd Sperry, John Marvel. Again, all of these people, the top executives, the NFL Network, all white, no diversity whatsoever. Uh, and this is what he was talking about. But it wasn't even just the top executives. He was asking questions about assignment editors. He was talking about even some of the low-level positions. My former agent, Mark Watts, was the head of, uh, head of uh, VP, Vice President for Talent for the NFL Network. Galen Gordon uh, followed him up. He left to go to ABC. Uh, and so uh, the reality is you simply do not have uh, uh, black execs at the NFL Network for a league that is predominantly African-American. And frankly, for these owners, what they desire, frankly, are well-paid sharecroppers. Yes. And the thing, everything that we've been talking about today and everything you just stated, here's the caveat to it. And this is why it's very hard for someone like me that covers race and sports on a day-to-day -day basis to get excited about what happened Sunday. For those who didn't realize, um, the NFL made history. Uh, the league for week one of the season had 14 black starting quarterbacks. That's never happened. But it's kind of hard to celebrate that when this league only has three black coaches who identify as black and the small amount of, of GMs and a couple handful of team presidents we have. And then that graphic we just saw uh, at NFL media that dictates how this league is covered. Um, so while you might have progress in one small area on the field when it comes to quarterback, all of the things we discussed today have gone on to show that there isn't progress at all. There's a lot of regression happening in most places. Um, and for, for folks who don't understand uh, why these lawsuits matter, it is because it's two things. And I say this all the time. And look, when we're going after the advertising industry, America only responds two ways. They respond, they respond to public pressure and they respond to money. And that's what lawsuits are also about. And the reality is the NFL is a $15 billion a year entity. Yes, the number one sport. But they have been absolutely exposed in terms of who they are. Uh, Damaris Smith, uh, who left as the head of the NFL Players Association, wrote a scathing piece talking about racism in the NFL. This is a reality with this league. And they love to, and again, they love to hide behind uh, people who make the decisions. And look, you were, you, you, know, you, you, you were critical uh, of even Jay-Z in your piece uh, when they signed the deal with him, when he made the point about with, with Kaepernick, oh, we're way past Neely. Well, guess what, Jay-Z? You're working with the NFL for halftime entertainment, other, in, in, other entertainment. We'd love to see him respond to Jim Trotter's lawsuit. <laughs> I would love to, too. Um, and I'm happy you brought up the Demore Smith piece. Um, I, I've been really busy today. I haven't got a chance to read it. Um, but I find it very convenient that DeMora Smith wrote this piece when just in Birmingham, there was a panel we did on race and sports that featured myself, um, the great Mark Spears at Anscape and ESPN, and the legend Bill Roden. Uh, DeMora Smith was supposed to be on that panel um, to have this conversation with us. DeMora Smith chose not to after he originally committed. 
But I, I, hold on, hold on. I, I will say this so. here. We don't know why he also was supposed to come on our show in July, but his 93-year-old father took seriously ill. Uh, so, again, I don't know why. So, I actually sent him a text today uh, saying, hey, uh, but he's supposed to come on the show. So, he sent me a text message on July 5th of that particular piece. It was called The Rooney Suggestion. And he's supposed to come on July 12th. Uh, but uh, his, uh, he's told me his 93-year-old father suddenly got ill. So, uh, and I sent him a text message that, hey, I'd love to have you on. How was your dad? Haven't heard back from him. So, again, that could have been the reason why he wasn't there, because his dad took ill. Oh, oh, and, 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 you know, prayers to his family, and it's understandable. But I have been in other press conferences in other rooms where he's been. Um, and the, I, I'll say this very gently as I can. The energy has been consistent, and I'll just leave it there. Well, the thing, see, the thing for me is it's real simple, and that is you can talk about these things, uh, but you have to confront them uh, as aggressively as possible. And you cannot dance with racism. You cannot dance with races. You cannot placate them. Uh, and it does take individuals of courage. Uh, and the reality is Brian Flores had courage uh, to step up. Now, I made it perfectly clear to him and his attorneys, stop only talking to white media. Y'all need to come talk to black-owned media. I'm still waiting for him to come over here. Uh, and, but it takes courage for Jim to do what, do what he does. Because, look, there are other black folks uh, at the NFL Network who ain't said a word, who haven't spoken up. And unfortunately, I always talk about parking lot militants. A lot of folks love talking stuff in the parking lot. When you go into the building, they get real quiet. And so there are, there are moments when black folks who work in this place have to understand, it may be Jim Crowd today, but it might be you tomorrow, and you might get laid off, and then you're like, oh my goodness, I was a model employee, but it doesn't matter. So I don't want to hear nothing after the fact. My whole deal is, when you're in the trenches, as Jim said, you've got to change these things for the people who are coming behind you. Uh, 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 Karan, final comment. Ah, good point. Uh, and we saw this with the Brian Flores case, like we talked about earlier. At first, it was Brian Flores having that, that courage. And then we saw Ray, uh, Steve Wilkes and Ray Horton join in with him. I would be interested, as I know you are, if anyone else from NFL media, NFL Network, or other black reporters who have covered the league also want to jump in this lawsuit with uh, our brother Jim Trotter or file their own. Uh, Jim uh, released these comments here. Go to my iPad. He said, the NFL has claimed it wants to be held accountable regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion. I tried to do so, and it cost me my job. I'm filing this lawsuit because I can't complain about things that are wrong if I'm unwilling to fight for what is right. He also said, I hope this lawsuit leads to real change across the league and in the newsroom. It is on the backs of a majority black player population that owners have made billions, and those players deserve to have someone who shares their cultural and life experiences at the table when decisions are being made about how they are being covered. Karan Phillips, we appreciate it, bro. Thanks a lot.